Uh, greetings, patrons. This is going to be a timeline video. Now, a lot of this is like going to have plus and minuses. It's not going to be 100% um, accurate because, you know, predicting the future is pretty difficult. But we can, with some reliability, know the capacities of certain technologies in the short run. And that could be where we can look for investments um, on these general timelines. And, you know, one of the most reliable metrics is using timelines and using cycles and using all these things. So that's what we're going to run over in, we're going to go over in, um, in this video. So right now, um, I think it's the optimal time to buy it. Like, uh, now, you know, some people criticize me and say, oh, you always say that. And that's not necessarily true. I do say that crypto is undervalued and it's remained undervalued until it's roughly about 100 to 400 trillion total market cap. And what I mean by that is crypto is going to eat the world like crypt like uh, the crypto technology. If you really understand it, if you really get what crypto is, you'll understand that cryptocurrency is going to run the world. It's going to run the equities. It's going to run the loans. It's going to run the finance. And everything's going to change from this in the long run. So right now, crypto's total market cap is about $1 trillion. And it's going to go to $400 trillion, you know, to run the world's assets. This is going to be one of the easiest um, ways to get rich in our lifetimes. Now, I think that maybe within the next 30 years, basically the next, you know, um, the, you know, I'm roughly near my 30s. Um, you know, the next half of my life, we're going to move to a world where money stops making sense. And that generally comes from like, super, you know, that that's if you really think that artificial intelligence is going to go where it looks like it's going. And like human labor starts to, you know, uh, human labor starts becoming less and less significant. And, and, it, and it, it goes to more and more depending on AI and robots and things like that, which everything has been following. Uh, you know, you should read these books by Ray Kurzweil, The Singularity, The Singularity is Nearer, like these kind of books to really get uh, an accurate picture of the longer run, but I'm going to try to stick to the short run. So let me just, you know, not get too uh, divergent here. So um, you can see here that global VC investing, global capital, because of the Fed and because of the negative narratives, etc., there's almost no funding for technology, startups, crypto. That's when you want to get in. You don't have any competition. This right here... This right here is high competition. When when you know you have the VCs coming in and pushing the Solanas and pushing the Maddox, like the, you want to get in those type of projects. You want to get in high quality projects right now, this year, next year, now. Like the, you know, like I could be wrong about this. I'm I can't tell the future, but right now, this fear type of thing really looks clear to me that. This w oops. This would be the time to get into these kind of things. Like you know, I've done this multiple times. I've seen this cycle multiple times, and I and I get better and better at it each and every time. I learn new things each and every time, and you know, it really is the saying that you buy fear, you buy boring, you buy when no one's paying attention, you buy when the chart looks like this. When everybody, when interest goes away, because now you're not competing anymore for dollars. So that's where we are right now. I think we're at the best buying time for crypto. This is the get rich quick time. I personally think that I could be wrong, but we're prime, prime, prime time to be buying crypto. All right. Now let's get into like, let's look at this thing. This each one of these blocks is about six months. We're in the middle of the year. Um, so, you know, it's it goes from June to uh, from January to June, right? We're in June right now. <coughs> All right. So each one of these blocks is about half. Um, uh, each one of these blocks is a halfway point. This, uh, you can see this little um, 
this is roughly the year 2024. This is the year 2025. This is year 26. So that can kind of give you like the timeline we're looking at. We're looking at, you know, over the next about three years. That's what this timeline represents. Now we're looking at, um, you know, like where technology is coalescing. You, you, where I am extrapolating. A lot of these statements are coming from Ray Kurzweil's type research. I've seen that he's been roughly right about a lot of things. This is also generalized talks, presentations in TED, etc. I try to make it as easy as possible. So we're going to have full self-driving, um, no longer needs intervention in 99% of drives. Um, I never need to intervene in my driving with my Tesla. So if for those who are unfamiliar with Tesla, right now anyone could turn on self-driving, but it needs interventions on a regular basis. And and this when this these interventions really start to disappear is by the end of this year. This matches with the LLMs, with the with the language models, this matches with AI's. Um, progress in how it's, you know, AI is on an 18 month cycle and it's actually shrinking. So, you know, what we're going to see here is this, this is going to be massive wealth creation. So there's a lot of doom and gloomers out there who think that the economy is going to crash, etc. Times are going to get hard. But with this technology, now the, it, with self-driving, it really does require that regulators, governments allow it to happen. If governments stop it from happening, the, we won't see the boom in productivity. We won't see the massive, massive amount of wealth creation. We won't see the massive cost deductions in assets across the economy if um, regulation gets in the way. But the technology will be mature by the end of the year. Um, and I'm pretty sure that some politicians will want this to happen because they will want things to get positive. We have the presidential election coming up by the end of next year. And that means that they're going to want to do everything that they can to start getting things positive before the election, getting people in a good mood, progress, people feeling richer. So I'm pretty sure they might help this full self-driving car technology to take off because, you know, that's going to be a massive amount of wealth creation out of nowhere for virtually for free from AI. But if regulated, you know, a lot of these statements are going to be if or if regulator, regulators get in the way, we won't see the benefit of that of that uh, particular uh, innovation. But we, but the technology is finally there. Now, it's been predicted for a long time now. Uh, a lo like, it was predicted like two years ago. The reason I think it's going to be this time for real, it's going to be really by the end of this year, is because it matches up with the general capabilities we're seeing from stable diffusion, from the LLMs, from the capacities of AI coming into real world use cases actually maturing right now. Like this real AI vertical takeoff is really happening right now. And that's why it looks like this one. You know, it, it's virtually there right now. It's pretty close to not needing interventions, but it will be at that level. So I'm just going to move past that. All right. AI can do all office related work. That will happen in the next six months with the next iteration of ChatGPT technology, ChatGPT 5. It's going to encompass pretty much all human testing. It's going to be able to do any office-related work. There are studies saying that it's going to replace 50% of work, but it this will I think it'll be 100%. Um, I could be wrong about this, but this is what it really looks like. It looks like AI will be able to do all office-related work. It will be able to draw uh, any correlation. It will be able to do any math. It'll be able to do any analysis. And this is one of the th tools I'm going to use with my expectation for you guys. I'm going to use this um, this expectation to fill in spreadsheets and do evaluations and do use the technology to the fullest of, of what it's capable of doing when it matures at this level. So that's what I'm expecting. In the next six months, we're going to see AI will be able to do any office-related work. I could be wrong, but that's what it really looks like, and it, I don't think I'm wrong. I'm just going to say that. All right, so you got these little stars here. This is some of the things that you guys are interested in. This is what I expect for the crypto markets. I'm expecting the Bitcoin top off in the middle, roughly of uh, first quarter of next year. That's going to be the, the peak of Bitcoin. It correlates to the general cycle that Bitcoin has. That would be the timing of the Bitcoin um, <clears throat> from the cycle, from the um, happening cycle. That's when the peak would be. Um, 
roughly around January, February, March, around March, March of next year. That's when I expect the Bitcoin top off to be. Uh, of it, that's that's just what I'm expecting it, and that would match up with all the previous uh, Bitcoin cycles. So it match all the previous cycles. <coughs> also, we have this little one right here. Um, I'm expecting um, a, a general rally in stimulus-related things, crypto, assets, stocks. Why? Because of the election. Like, this is going to be the run-up to the election. So after the first, first quarter of next year to the end of the year, um, they're going to want people to feel positive. They're going to want people to feel rich. It's likely that President Biden, the government, is going to be making some calls. You know, this is all speculation on my part, but I know that politicians will want people to feel good. Right now, they don't. It's likely that the Fed raised rates when it did so that it could get a lot of the um, ripping the Band-Aid off so that it could try to lower rates try to get things exciting again for the election. They do work together. The Fed does work with government, even though it's supposed to be a separate entity, they work together. This is speculation on my part. This is what I've seen in general, that they're going to want to use, pull whatever strings they can to create a run, create an optimism in the uh, starting from the first quarter of next year because of the presidential election. They want people to be happy and that's how they keep their power. So that's speculation on my part. So that's something to consider, and I'll erase that. Now, this is when I think the altcoins are going to peak out um, after the middle of next year. They they will peak out after Bitcoin. That's typically what happens a few months after, usually around four to five, six months later, we see the altcoin um, run. So if you get in now, right now, as I expect, this is the get-rich time, you would be looking at an exit in about uh about a year and a quarter you know to, this is get rich numbers right now i could be wrong but this is the type of 100 x's that are possible i've seen this before and i i expect it to happen again history looks like it's repeating this would line up with the government doing stimuluses this would line up with the government wanting people to be excited this would line up with the fed losing rates this would line up with you know the big um really like the uh, change in narratives the you know the super negative environment that we're in now vcs getting in etc 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 so this looks like to be the 100x period right here which is you know what everybody wants <clears throat> all right so then there is so I, yeah bull market crypto i expect that basically this is going to be a really good year for crypto 2024 2024 very good year for crypto all right. Um, so now we have um, virtual reality is going to be taking off. Um, it, you're going to be having visually indistinguishable from the real world, but it will be expensive. This is the Apple products. This is the high end virtual realities for this year. You're going to start getting people excited. People are going to want VR headsets, but it's going to be kind of too expensive. But this is when... Um, I am hallucinating about things that are not there. I sometimes forget that I am not wearing the headset. Those kind of statements will happen. If you've ever played video games, if you've got obsessed about video games for a little while, I, I played a couple of video games in my day. But I, you know, I, you know, if I got obsessed with a particular video game, that would be something I would be thinking about all the time. And sometimes I would get small hallucinations. Well, just imagine what the hallucinations will be like um, when... People see real-world objects indistinguishable from reality in their virtual reality headset. This means reality will somewhat – like there might be problems that come from this. So we're, um, we're going to see stuff like that happen next year because um, that's when we have those headsets coming out. Now, what we're going to look for as investors is we would look for VR, AR takeoff, dating apps. Like imagine being able to swipe left or right um, the females or males – in virtual reality, you'll actually be able to see what they look like physically instead of pictures because pictures lie. 
But in virtual reality, there's a, you're, you're going to get a far more accurate representation of what a person actually looks like. And then guess what? You, if you both have the headset, you can have virtual dates and then be like, oh, like I really like this person. I want to meet them in real life. And then you go drive and meet the person at an actual bar or restaurant, etc. So I think virtual reality dating will be a real thing. I think that'll take off. It'll be a way to have a date before the real date and, and people can get the real impression of the other person. It also proves um, a little bit that that person has money because these VR headsets are going to be expensive. So I think that's going to be like one of the first um, things we see take off. Games, obviously, and then unknown. There will be unknown things that are hard to predict. Um, use your imagination because it's likely that there will be other things then we have the election. This is going to play a big role in narratives coming up. I think the major topics for this election are going to be AI, deficits, war, the economy. The war that's going off. And, you know, that's November next year. <coughs> All right. AI video um, uh, generations is amazing. Okay, so um, right now... We, uh, AI can make beautiful, amazing images, but it makes really crappy videos, and that's where it was for video for image generation a year ago. Um, so we are right here with um, crap, crap image, uh, crap video generation, but awesome, awesome uh, image generation. Um, a year ago, it it was crap, crap, right? This was crap as well. So. AI looks to be because of every 18 months, um, and it's following this very precisely, it's actually shrinking the time for the capacities of AI to get new capabilities, the doubling of AI's capabilities is 18 months, and it's shrinking. So, um, but I'm just, I'm, I usually use conservative numbers, so towards the end of next year, we're going to actually start getting AI video generation in real time that is Amazing. I couldn't tell the video was made completely by AI. That's the kind of statements you'll see. And that's the kind of implications you'll have with crypto. Crypto will need to help the world with this. And so things like Luxo should take off, etc. This is an exciting year. This is when we all should see 100Xers. So hopefully it happens. We'll see if it really does. Um, okay. Yeah, and this is the VR AR takeoff. Oh, roughly around... The end of last year to the middle of 2025. So roughly um, about a year or more than a year, we're going to see the AR VR take off. This is going to be a big time in history when that really takes off, in my opinion. All right, let me get rid of that. All right, so like as I said earlier with full self-driving, regulations will be the only hurdle at this point in, towards the end of 2024. Regulations will be the only thing holding full self-driving. This could potentially make the economy really take off if they allow it to happen. So um, it could start replacing drivers. You're, we, what we'll want to do is make sure we're still outside of commercial real estate because one-third of cities is parking space, and that will be freed up when this, this uh, takes off. Because they, cars won't need to be parked anymore, and it'll be a rapid takeoff because these cars will be massively cheaper than regular cars. This is all happening, guys. This is really happening. The stuff is, 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 is this is the, these next two years are the most exciting time in history for us type nerd people, me, nerds. Exciting, exciting times. The next two, three years are going to be very eventful. It's going to be a great time to be alive. Um, main competitors to Tesla, I think they're going to start going bankrupt after the next year and a half. I think Ford, uh, Toyota, all these companies, they're actually really going to start getting punched in the gut by Tesla's capabilities at this time. So it's likely that there's huge bankruptcies with those stocks. <clears throat> also, AI capabilities, once again, the year 2024, amazing year. It's going to be a lot happening. AI sounds just like humans in conversation. Um, I didn't realize I was talking to AI when I needed uh, to buy some product, etc. So that's the kind of thing. We're almost already there now, so this isn't too uh, amazing of a statement. Let me get rid of this. Get rid of all this. I'm just getting rid of all the stuff I covered. All right. Um, so we're going to get... 
At, now, around this probably could be closer to the year 2025. We're going to get personalized AI assistants um, that are virtually indistinguishable from humans, at least online. They're going to be more like a parrot, but they're going to be just sounding just like a human. So after about a, uh, a year and a half, we can expect that these AIs are going to start sounding just like you and me on the phone, in videos, because we're going to have AI videos. So this is really about the time. Um, roughly speaking, you know, I can't predict the exact time, but this is when it looks like this period towards the end of next year when we're going to be running into real questions about what AI can trick us into thinking. And um, there may even be stuff before the election, but the technology really is going to be getting to that point where we can't tell anything anymore and AI could really replace just about anything. Now, I expect the end of the Russian war, um, hopefully... Obviously, I want it sooner, but um, wars typically last four to five years, and we would expect, hey, finally that war, this horrible thing that humans are doing to each other could hopefully end by the end of uh, 2025. And if that happens, then that could potentially be a very good event in human history. Now, best time, like from the time that there was an inversion of the yield curve, the bottom of the stock market, the bottom of housing, the bottom of the generalized stocks, the boring stocks is going to be 2026. This is when you want to buy a house. You want to buy a house in the year 2026. This is my prediction. It's based on the inversions of the yield curve and the time it usually takes for the bottom out to happen. So that's about the time you want to have cash for a house. This is the time you want to buy it. Don't get impatient. Wait for this time. Buy it in 2026. At least that's what I expect based on the previous cycles, and it's pretty reliable. All right. Um, also, the year 2026, we're going to see VR really, really in most homes. It's going to be like the Xbox. It's going to be in 30% of homes, and it's going to be the first mass market VR is going to really take off in 2026. And we're also going to get humanoids in Tesla's factories really start to replace jobs doing real work in the year 2026. So in the next eight years, this is to finally close out this video, we're going to expect AGI within the next eight years equal to human capabilities. We're going to get the first um, computer that is truly as intelligent as humans. Now, I'm not expecting that in the upper uh, four years. I'm expecting that later in the four years. These are generalized statements, but this is what we're going to be expecting. In the next eight years, we are expecting to see AI at human level. That is going to have huge implications to humanity and our future. And, uh, hey, guys, we're in this ride together. Hopefully, everything goes well. Uh, AR, VR will be uh, like the holodeck, at least visually. So, like, if you know what Star Trek is, we're going to have, ver we're gonna have the, the holodeck within the next eight years. We're going to be able to see... It'll be just visually like it. There won't be touch. I mean, there'll be some maybe haptic feedback gloves, but that's not going to be widespread, or maybe it will. Who knows? But we do know that we're going to have the holodeck in eight, eight years, and that this is not – these are, aren't outlandish predictions. If you think that the things I'm saying sound outlandish, you haven't done your homework. These things I'm saying are – I'm being conservative. I'm trying to be as conservative as possible because I, because I want to be you know right about these things. Um, I make investments all the time based on some of these, these things. So I want to be right about timing. These are conservative statement, guys. Every, a lot is going to happen in these next eight years. Human progress um, is beginning to speed up in the next eight years. And by the year 2033, I expect there to be a massive bull market, a massive amount of wealth creation starting from the year 2026. But, you know, obviously there's these other bubbles in between. So hopefully this, this is enlightening. Maybe this helps you guys think about your strategy for the next two, three, four years coming up. Um, I try, you know, I, th this is based on a lot of uh, TED Talks, a lot of impressions from Ray Kurtzel's works. I may be right, I may be wrong, but it is based on the experts, uh, uh, you know, that people have expertise. And you can see uh, the, you know, like with things like Moore's Law or compu uh, computer capacity uh, graphs and with uh, AI graphs, that these things roughly follow the curve. I didn't even go over things like fusion, which I don't know if, you know, fusion's going to have any breakthrough within this time period. But, you know, solar is continually to drop in cost as well. These are all other things I didn't even uh, go into. But hopefully this is uh, enlightening. Hopefully it helps you with your strategy. Let me know if you like this video. I'll talk to you guys later.